Bloody Henry so <laughs> Thoroughbred jumping from the DJ stable The King Arthur of the chill turntable Beaming you the music at the speed of rhyme I'm light years ahead of my time I wanna get into it, man Bouncing hard fight from a satellite Aliens body rocking all day and night Somewhere between Mars and Mercury You see a new star called Christianity The number is CCO887B. Oh, sorry, Delbert. I just popped out to make sure I got the number right. Yeah, I'm downstairs in the street. Yeah, waiting for you. Yeah, ready when you are. I've been here about an hour. Oh, sorry, Delbert. Well, where are you then? I am elsewhere, Winston, as in St. Elsewhere, except I'm in their sister hospital, St. Nowhere, where seriously ill patients get to wear terminally ill pyjamas. I look like a military man. German tourists have been coming up to me and putting their towels on me to reserve me for the rest of the day. Well, if I'd known I was going to get my head magic mixed, Winston, I would have put my own pyjamas. Unfortunately, the geezers who just smashed up Crucial FM couldn't get their knuckles off the ground far enough to write me a warning, all right? Someone smashed up the radio station? Oh, well, that is bad news, man. Mm. S still, yeah, if you're off the air, that means I can come and visit you this evening. Well, they didn't do it to enrich your social life, Winston. How can it be so selfish? I mean, here I am, confined in a wheelchair. I've got a bandage on my head that's been handed down from ancient Egypt. And the worst part of it is... Well, no, I don't tell you, man. You might be tapping the phone. So, look. I want you to visit me now and bring the following essentially crucial items. Number one, a white geezer to push my wheelchair in revenge for Ironside. <laughs> Tell me he'd been put in the Barbara Cartland wing. <laughs> I think Delbert's incapable of telling the truth about anything. Oh, Trevor, you're getting to know him well. 20 years of police training helps, Rose. You wouldn't need 20 minutes to know that's a forgery. Get bad soon, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Jacuzzi, Mr. Wilkins. Yeah, and it better be the real thing this time, nurse. Not a tin bath with an egg whisk. <laughs> <laughs> Mum! <laughs> now then, Delbert, where do to your head? Um, uh, well, like I said, I slipped over in the kitchen. Impossible. You never go in the kitchen. Good point, Rose. Yeah, well, I started to slip over in the living room, right? But I didn't want to bleed on the carpet, so I just moonwalked into the kitchen, you know what I mean? Because Lionel's easier to clean. Now I know he's been economical with the truth. <laughs> You've been attacked because you're still involved with that piratical radio. Uh, Mum, have some fruit. <laughs> you too, Tread. Make your journey worthwhile. <laughs> Don't worry, Rose. I'll get to the bottom of this. Nah, they'll be all squashed down the bottom. Take it from the top. <laughs> so how am I doing in the charts, Mum? And in at number one with a bullet, it's Delbert Wilkins and the crucial crew with Nurse, I want a bed bath with you all night long. <laughs> 
I can see why they put him in a ward by himself. Yeah. When was the last time you were in England, Trev? Must have been when the NHS was still a gleam in Mrs. Patcher's toll cap. This isn't an isolation ward. Delbert's here because it's the only bed they can afford to run. You know what I mean? And the only reason I got this was because I signed a gold donor's card. That gives them unlimited access to my organs. Heart, lung, liver, kidneys, sausage. <laughs> we are talking a mega mixed grill, man. When I come out of here, you'll be able to bury me in a Smarties tube. <laughs> but if this hospital's as poor as you say, well, how come Delbert's living in the lap of luxury? Mm -hmm. This is a veritable harvest festival, Rose. Yeah, well, I had to fall back on some private resources. Delbert, how could you? I spent ten years working in this hospital. Now you're telling me you've been going in for Booper? I haven't gone in for Booper, Mum. I just have my own personal organisation which is dedicated to my well-being. It's called Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what's up? Uh, nothing, Julie. Just picking up a few bits of stray fluff off the carpet. You've been doing that all morning. There can't be any carpet left. <laughs> Afternoon, Julie. All right. You're right, Julie. There's no carpet at all there now. <laughs> no, no, no. It's down here, Alex. Look. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thanks, Winston. You know, I think Alex is having a nervous breakdown. Every time that door opens, he does a Jacques Cousteau behind the counter. Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Quite a lot. Delbert's had his radio station smashed up. Oh, no, that's the only decent thing around here to listen to. So that's why you're nervous, Alex. Now, look, I can explain. There's no need to, man. I mean, I'd be nervous if I thought they were going to come round and attack my radio station. Oh, why didn't you tell us, Pet? You know, that's what a business partner's for, to take the weight off your shoulders. Wait? <laughs> what wait? So, uh, Delbert hasn't reported anything to the police, then? He hasn't had a chance to. He's still in hospital. The geezer's used him to smash up the equipment. <laughs> oh, hell's teeth. How bad is he? He's in a wheelchair, Julie. <laughs> Mum's now me. I'm not showing you, of course. The only stretch marks I've got are on my Levi's. Here's my surrogate mother now. Yo, Claudette, over here I've got a parking space for you. I've never seen this man before in my life. What can I do to remind her, ladies? Why don't you go in before you tell her so they can scan your brain for damage? <laughs> Oh dear, I thought you wanted me to share this pregnancy with you. That was before you told me about the crucial weight boxing championship of Brixton. Claudette, you should have been there, man. It was magnificent. You would have been proud of me. If that geezer hadn't have embedded my skull in the speakers, I would have won on points. <laughs> oh, last time I was in hospital, I had my head stuck in a saucepan. This is progress. I thought kids only got their heads stuck in saucepans in comics. Where do you think I got the idea from? <laughs> Daryl and Pearl sneaked into the kitchen because her mum was making this big cake, right? And Claudette, where are you going? I haven't got to the bit about the dog yet. <laughs> I think I've changed my mind about having this baby. Why? What's the matter? What's the point when its father's still living in the land of the Beano? What if you got killed last night? What would have happened to me and the kid? Could have gone round my mum's. That's not the answer, Dolby. Yeah, you're right. Trevor would have probably arrested it for being illegitimate. I meant the answer to who's going to look after us. Well, don't worry about that, Claudette, darling. It's all taken care of. Oh, so you've got life insurance and you've made a will, have you? No. My mum couldn't get her old nursing job back here, so she's available to look after you and the kid any time I get killed. What's she doing now? Later. Oh, you don't think he's dead, do you, Julie? No. If he was, they would have had someone else in the bed by now. He's probably using a disabled toilet. Cool. Toilet's broken too. <laughs> oh, and there's something else to complain about. Listen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
That's right, Winston. Why don't you just sit down and relax, man? Just rest your body. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Doing, Julie, what's going on? Look, man, I'm too weak to play Hunt the Present, so why not just give it to me now? Why don't I do you a big favour instead? Oh, Winston, draw the screens. <laughs> draw new screens, Delbert. Didn't mind if you make another suggestion like that. Sorry, Julie. Winston, get an anaesthetic. Finish off what nature started. What do you want to stay electric for? <laughs> Delbert! I've come to talk to you about criminal injuries. I wasn't going to hit him, just unblock the wax round his brain. How I think you can get compensation from Alex. What, you mean Alex has been bragging about wasting Crucial FM, has he? He hasn't said a thing. Well, how do you know about it, then? I put two and two together. Two prats, that is. Him for trying to intimidate you, and you for not calling the police to try and stop him. Oh, sure, Julie. So what am I going to say? Hello, PC Lily, it's me, Delbert Wilkins, your friend. Help! I'm being attacked! <laughs> he would have rushed out the station, leapt on the first passing tortoise, and got round there as fast as he could. <laughs> so you're not going to take any action at all against Alex? Of course I am. The only appropriate action. Global thermonuclear attack! <laughs> Good thinking, Del, but that'll get you the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, well, the plan still has a bit of fine-tuning to do, courtesy of my brilliant boffin over there. Cool, man. This hospital radio, then I'll send you to sleep. It's worse than some of the stuff I have to broadcast, Del, but... It's meant to put you to sleep, Winston. They use it as an anaesthetic. Yeah, electric! <laughs> right. Bags on in the red Porsche. <laughs> so tell me, Claudette, how did things go at the hospital today? Hmm? I had a bit of a nasty shock, to be honest. A bad case of irresponsibility, I think you'd call it. Huh? That don't show up on a scan, darling. Not unless you can see a little baby in there running an illegal domino game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Rose, the scan was fine. It's Delbert. I thought that being beaten up might have knocked some sense into him, but it doesn't look like it has. <laughs> That's hereditary. This was supposed to be a family photograph. But Delbert's dad had to be stuck in later because he was stuck in court at the same time. So how did you cope with bringing up a child on your own? You want me to give you the recipe? Well, that's what mother-in-laws are supposed to do, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not your mother-in-law yet, you know. I don't want you marrying my son till he guarantees to look after you. Take it from me, Claudette. A wedding vow's not nearly enough. Jack, they love themselves, they cherish their cars, and the only thing they honor is their gambling debts. Or oh, their pirate radio stations. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Listen, Claudette, Delbert is nothing like as big a rude boy as his father. Sonny would have had that wheelchair broken up for scrap by now. <laughs> got to give Delbert time. He gets there in the end. But it does go via Disneyland. If it's Winston, I thought of it, so it must be. Yeah, but. Never mind, yeah, but, Winston. History is littered with yeah, buts. Do you think Everest would have been conquered if someone had looked out and said, yeah, but it's snowing? Do you think Europe would have been liberated if someone had turned to your namesake, Churchill, and said, yeah, but the sea's a bit choppy? Can't we put off D Day to this day? Yeah, but. I'm warning you, Winston. Look, I mean, look, listen. What is the point in hijacking a hospital radio station when all the patients are sleeping? It was you back in history, wasn't it, Winston? Raising piddling little objections to the schemes of great men. Nah, it couldn't have been me, Delbert. Because, you see, Winston Churchill had already climbed Everest before I was born. <laughs> look, let me break this down for you very carefully. I am now at war with Alex, right? So I am assuming emergency powers to commandeer this hospital radio station for propaganda purposes. So all you gotta do is fix that aerial over there, have it pointing to the heart of the city, because the nation awaits. Avant. What's that mean? Just been sold off over there and put the thing on the chimney. <laughs> Flexing. What's happening? How are you doing? Um, I expect you're wondering why we're here. 
Well, it's like this, see. We both work undercover for Edwina Curry, and she's visiting here tomorrow. So my colleague is finding the shortest distance from the front door to the wards, so she can say that the queues for hospital beds have been reduced. <laughs> and these are so she can announce record spending levels in the hospitals. That was your average British photo Winston. Cool. Have you ever thought about standing for Parliament, Delbert? Because you can really pull the wool over people's eyes, mate. I'm surprised you noticed that, Winston, with that entire sheep on your head. <laughs> Other tricks, Winston. The airwaves is my constituency. Yeah, you're right. Let's rumble. No, 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 Winston, not in there. That's where DJs go when they have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Come on, Winston. This chamber of ours has given me a relapse. Oh, I'm doing a conviction claim to me, it's horrible. I want my life support system. What's the hold up? Have you got 50 pence for the meter? <laughs> no, flipping hospital radio. I haven't got anything that amputated all my valuables when I come in here. Somewhere in this place, there's a hospital porter walking around looking totally spondicious. <laughs> no. No. No, you can't, Calvert! Yes, I can, Winston. Just think of it as a fine for all those stupid racist jokes they put in their rag mags. Why is it all these doctors think that all black geezers are called Rastus? I mean, we don't think that they're all Australian wooden tops called Bruce or Charlene or Crocodile, do we? <laughs> there you go, mate. All right. How you doing? This is the Phantom of the Operating Theatre, Delbert Lloyd Wilkins here. <laughs> Cats, rapid like a superstar in my Technicolor dream jammers on the brand new, privately funded, crucial NHS FM. Now then, last night I had to come off the air for some urgent engineering repair work, mainly because someone was playing Lady Smith Black Man Basil on my face. We are talking serious percussion here, like somebody say, eh, 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 ah, ah, ah. but don't worry because this Radio Phoenix is rising from the ashes with a special message for one of our regular listeners. Yo, Kazobolis. You can't stop me with intimidation. There's only room in Brixton for one crucial station. I'll blow you away with every trick in the book. And if you mess with me again, I'll tell Roger Cook. I'll tell Roger <laughs> Cook. I'll tell Roger Cook. <laughs> cook, 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 cook. Kick it! <laughs> I've been driving all night and slid on the wheel. <laughs> Constable Lily. I didn't realise this was your patch. Most of your colleagues are down at the sorry guy fell down the stairs ward. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad the surgeons were able to save your mouth, sir. Would have been such a loss for mankind. <laughs> so what's all about then, Constable? Low tire pressure? Speeding? Let's just proceed a while, shall we? A little bird has been singing in my ear, Wilkins. She's been telling me, in her quaint Geordie trill, that you may be plotting mayhem. Oh, she took advantage of me, man. I was groggy, befuddled, just coming round after a hospital omelette. No, 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 sir. <laughs> My informant was quite categoric. I believe the words used were nuclear attack. Oh, she took it the wrong way, guy. I mean, people are always doing that. For instance, I was playing baby love in my flat one night while my girlfriend was there, right? Next thing I know, she's three months pregnant. I mean, maybe Julie thought I meant nuclear attack in a hostile way. She was acting in the public interest, sir. I deplore vigilante action. Ruins my spare time. Look, guy, you can't arrest people for using certain words. Yes, I can. And revenge is such an ugly one. Oh, yeah? Well, there's lots of other ugly ones, Guy. Like wrongful and prosecution and get back on point duty, constable. Constable. <laughs> ugly. Sergeant Lily sounds so much better, don't you think? Oh, I see. You didn't come round here to ask about my operation scars. You came to get your stripes back where you can forget it. I won't be a sacrificial lamb. I was thinking more in terms of a kebab. 
All right, what's happening? Now listen, I've been looking around at all the resources that aren't being used around here, right? Because when I look at this place, I don't see a hospital. I see a national health service station for tired businessmen who've been circling around the M25 waiting for major surgery. <laughs> If I'm in here any longer, I'll be providing them with duvets, nursograms, and free x-rays developed while they sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <coughs> Cheers. Well, I'll come again. Cheers. Nice. Be lucky. And all this cash is going to go to the hospital so they can afford to give my mum her old job back. And everybody's happy, OK? <laughs> well, actually, you know, it's not OK. Because if we want a crucial health service, it has to be properly funded and not by skanks. Otherwise, you'll have entrepreneurs worse than me moving in and putting the whole thing on the open market. And you know what that means, don't you? Ambulances on parking meters being towed away. A surgical sock shop in the lobby. And worst of all, a branch of Next in the mortuary. <laughs> and then pretty soon you'll have surgeons waking you up in the middle of an operation saying, excuse me, guy, how much is it worth to stitch you up? <laughs> well, if you don't want this nightmare to come true, you better wake up and soon, because the NHS isn't safe in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Alimera, ladies. This is AKE your DJ, Alex Casanova Kazovlis, bringing you Mesimeriani Gnorimia, our lunchtime affair. <laughs> and the first record coming up to put you in the mood is by a very good amigo of mine, Senor Julio Iglesias. Now, I read in the papers that old Julio claims to have made love to over 10,000 women. Well, he's got a way to go before he catches me up. <laughs> because I make love to 10,000 of you every lunchtime. Etsy then in, isn't that right? <laughs> You're listening to the BBC, Brixton's only legitimate radio station. And remember, you may brought us, I'm number one. I don't want any of you being unfaithful to me now, do I? Especially not without my lacquer, Delbert Wilkins. <laughs> I thought he was broadcasting last night. Of course you did, Winston. You were engineering it. Now, where is he? Why? So you can go around and do another Julio Iglesias on his radio station again? What? No, I just want to do a deal with him. Settle our dispute man to man. Don't you mean three men to one man, Alex? Or three men, two crowbars, one baseball bat? It's a bit early for the 12 days of Christmas, isn't it, Winston? <laughs> now, where's he doing it from? I ain't telling you, Alex. You better add, or I'll sack you. You can't do that. I've just accepted Winston's resignation. And in this envelope is a cheque for a thousand pound severance pay. Thanks, Julie. You walk out of here with that. You'll need twice as much for hospital fees. Oh, that sounded like a threat, Alex. I hope you don't make a habit of it. Look, all I was trying to do was put the frighteners on Delbert. I didn't mean him to get hurt. I told those gorillas to damage his speakers. They must have thought I meant his mouth. <laughs> oh, I simple subhuman mistake. Crucial FM was direct competition for us, Julie. It had to be rubbed out. You've got no head for business, have you? Calimera, Constable, Tiganis. You're a bit early for cop shop, aren't you? It's not on till tomorrow. Wrong, Alex. It's being recorded today. Thank you, sir. All I was trying to do was put the frighteners on Delbert. I didn't mean it again. <laughs> I think you'd better come along with me, Mr. Kazoblis. Oh, no, I won't. You're out of a job. And you're out of a job. And you're out of a job. I have a warrant for your arrest and a sworn statement from Mr. Wilkins, and now this. That should make three, I think. Three years? Three stripes. <laughs> Congratulations, Sergeant Lilly. Uh, Winston Flower, do you want to take over at the hot seat now? Casanova's been caught with his cakes down. Sure, Jim. <laughs> this place is nothing without me. You'll be out of business within a week. <laughs> not with Delbert back on the team, we won't. D well, <laughs> you're not getting any check. It's the only malakis. I bet mentioning money makes Alex so mad he confesses. I wonder if you can scratch Julio Iglesias. Um, 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 um. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, this is your doctor in the house, Delbert Wilkins, saying it's time to haul down the Jolly Roger and pick up his bed and walk, which means going back to the brand new Brixton Broadcasting Corporation with a show that's going to be so totally spondicious, your ears would experience meltdown. So pump up the volume and join me there, because I'm telling you, man, you... <laughs> Big finish, eh? <laughs> bye bye, Crucial FM. Hello, P A Y E. Claudette, can't you talk about anything instead of tax? Mm, okay, how about babies? <sighs> Do you think ours is going to be famous? Well, why not? It's got successful mother and father. I thought you said the kid was mine. Oh, come on, darling. You're well on the way now. Getting properly paid for doing work you enjoy doing, what could be better? Apart from me spending the night in your ward. Ah, I'm sorry, Claudette. I've got five airline pilots coming in from Gatwick tonight. No can do, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, well, near miss. Oh, there you are, Delbert. I've been looking all over the hospital for you. What you trying to do? Get me the sack the day you get me the job back? Be gentle with him, Rose. He's working for a living from tomorrow. You know what I mean? And I said it could never be done. Well, I hope it don't involve talking too much. <laughs> but what else would it involve? What's the matter, ma'am? Because when you were admitted, you had a hairline fracture of the jaw. Now it's as wide as the San Andreas Fault. <laughs> mm, you better come with me. Oh, well. Here's yours, How are you going to go back on the BBC? Mm. Yeah, I suppose I'll have to sit in for you. Mm. Yeah, probably not entitled to sit by yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 